So far in this lab exercise, we managed to create a container image of my Wolf application, publish into Amazon ECR repository. And we also created a cluster and ran our image as a container image, and then got our website working. The final piece that is left to do is to do the full integration so that every time when a developer makes some changes and commit into the repository, the container image get built and then get published into the Fargate cluster. So let's see how we can do that. Go to my Wolf application, go to the pipelines, select my Wolf app ASP.NET Core CI pipeline that we have been building so far, click edit. So this pipeline from our previous lab, uh, we managed to get it working up to this stage. So we build the .NET Core application, we publish the image into uh, Elastic Container Registry, we remove the temporary images. So the final step that we need to do is to get uh, the publication of these images into ECS. So if you uh, select this update ECS service, uh, here I'm executing a bash command. So I'm invoking uh, AWS CLI command line interface to execute uh, update service uh, task. So here I'm using this AWS ECS update service. You can read the documentation under AWS CLI. And all what I'm doing is telling ECS, hey, this is the cluster I want to update. This is the service I want to update. Uh, this is the desired count of the task I want to run. The task definition is my Wolf app website task. And I do a force new deployment. Uh, and also give the region uh, where this cluster is at. So what this does is, remember when we created my uh, Wolf uh, website task, we gave the image as the latest image. So let's go back and then look at uh, the image that we are going to create here. So if you go into uh, the publish ECR, you can find that the image that we are publishing is called, we tag my Wolf app release one as the, uh, with full URL of the repository and then we tag it as the latest. And we publish this latest image into our ECR repository. And when we created the service, so remember we created a service called my Wolf app service, or my Wolf app website. This service referred, always referred to the latest image. So if we update the latest image and then refresh the cluster, uh, refresh the service with, the, uh, uh, with this command, it's going to take the latest image. So that's what we are going to do here. Uh, the name of the service, uh, name of the cluster is my container cluster. So let's double check whether these names are correct. So name of the cluster is my uh, container cluster, which is correct. Name of the service is my wolf website. Service name is my wolf website. Desired count is two. So this is the number of uh, tasks that I need to run. So if I look at this service, you can find that the desired count is two. And the task definition is going to be my wolf website, uh, uh, my wolf website task which is what I have configured for this uh, service. So my Wolf website task one. So this is the version. And if you look at this task definition, I'm not referring to a specific version. So if you look at, uh, select this, and then click um, create a new version maybe, or like select this task definition, look at it carefully. Uh, the containers that I have defined here, it refers to the latest uh, image. So if I update this latest image with my changes and then refresh the service, it should work. So that's what I'm doing there. So uh, this looks good. All my uh, naming here is correct. There's no any spelling mistake. Uh, the final step is to grant permission to my built agent so that uh, it has permission to execute this command. If you don't want to grant permission to uh, EC, uh, the built agent, you can take the temporary credentials here using our secure token service and use those tokens to uh, execute this command. But we know uh, throughout this lab series, we study how to do that. But throughout this lab series, we are assigning the permissions into our built agent. 
because that's an easy approach. So let's go there and then change our built agent to have this permission and then execute this pipeline. I'm back in my AWS console, go to EC2 section, go to running instances. So this is the built machine that's going to execute that pipeline. Go to the IAM role, let's open it in a new tab. So we already grant Amazon EC2 container registry full access to publish the image. We already know that if you want to give it uh, fine-grained principle permissions to publish uh, to a specific repository, we can do that with a custom uh, IAM policy. Uh, but to make our life easy, and this is a lab environment, we are going to attach a policy. And this policy is going to be a manage policy instead of a customer manage a specific uh, permission that allow just enough uh, permissions to update the service. I'm going to give uh, permission to update the service. So if you look at uh, Amazon EC2 container service full access, so this gives access to all the container services. In production environment, we don't do this, uh, but in lab environment, this manage policy is good enough to uh, attach into this built agent. So when you are building this one in a production cluster, create a manage policy and create that manage policy in a way that it allows update only to a given service so that the built agent or the temporary credentials that you are assuming to uh, get access to that will have only access to that service. Because this is a lab environment, I just give this full access. So the built agent can deploy these artifacts into uh, the content registry and then update the service. All looks good, so let's execute the pipeline. Back in Azure Pipeline, if you make any changes, make sure that you save them, and then let's queue a new build. Queue a new build. Go to the build number. You can find that it's executing certain build steps. So if everything works fine, all the steps should get executed without any errors. So it's now uh, sending the image. So there was an error in uh, remove temporary image. Seems like there's an error. So let's see what is the error here. Aha, uh -huh. there's no such image like this. So when I look at this error, you can find that uh, what is happening is this task is failing. The reason why it failed was that I kept my previous default URL here. Of course, I need to point to the right account that I'm running this. So if you are running in a different AWS account, this uh, URL is going to be different, especially if it is in a different region and if you are running in a different account ID. So what I publish is this image. So this is the uh, name of the image that I created in my built agent. So in the remove uh, temporary images, I need to give that image name. And uh, also the other image that I'm creating here, which I need to remove. So now it's good shape. So these are the two images I want to remove. Uh, click save. And then queue a new build. So select this. If everything goes fine, uh, this should execute the pipeline. Let's see whether it will work now. So it's checking out the uh, source control, restoring the packages, building the .NET application, and it's uh, creating a publication of that artifacts, creating a publishing to ECR, that's done. I'm in my AWS console, go to ECS, select that. Go to my container cluster, select the service, and if you go into the deployments, you can find that there's a deployment happening behind the scene. So this is the first version that we publish. And behind the scene, there's another uh, deployment happening whose pending count is two. It still haven't started uh, some tasks. So at some point in time, this new version is going to start uh, 
some containers. So as of now, it's still uh, starting the containers. So while it is happening, if I go into my load balancer, you see two section, go to load balancers. And if you select this DNS name, paste it here, your web application is still running fine with the previous container IDs. So if I go into my uh, EC2 section, ECS section, so now you can find the new version that I publish got its containers running. So at some point in time, uh, this will come to, uh, this will start using those new containers. So back in my load balancer, if I go into the target groups and select this uh, target group and look at the targets, you can find that uh, the all containers are draining. So these are the two all containers or the task definition that is started running. Uh, and then the new containers are now in healthy state. So at some point in time, the all containers will uh, start going to the draining state. So let's refresh this again. So you can find that the all containers are now in the draining state and the new containers are in healthy state. So this web application is now using the uh, latest version of our application. Of course, we haven't changed in anything here and that's why you find uh, the same message. But our continuous uh, deployment pipeline is working fine. So to finish everything up, let's go there and then create a change in this web application and then publish it with our Visual Studio code. So back in my Azure DevOps, let's uh, edit this uh, pipeline and go into triggers. Make sure that you have selected enable continuous integration. So every time when I make any changes and then commit uh, them into the Azure repository, this pipeline get executed. So let's go into Visual Studio Code, make some changes, and then commit those changes into the repository. Open Visual Studio Code. Open the project folder under C Due. The project name is called My Wolf App. Select that folder. And then once that uh, project is open, you, uh, go to Views, go to Home, select the index.html file. So this is the message it's typing. So let's call this message, welcome to Fargate, my wolf app, full pipeline is done. Let's call this one version three. So everything is in good shape. Uh, so the changes are here. Uh, let's give it a name like uh, change the message. Commit it. And let's finally push it. So before you push this one, make sure that you open the browser windows to view how this deployment works. So you need to have three windows. One for ECS. You select the container cluster, go to the service, and make sure that you select this uh, service and then select to the deployment. So you can find that uh, what kind of deployment is uh, active at the moment. So the all deployment is still there. At some point in time, this will uh, vanish from here. So let's deploy a new uh, deployment and then see how it appears here. And also uh, make sure that you have a pointer into your load balancer, target groups. So you can see how some containers drain after some time. So right now you have two healthy uh, tasks and two draining uh, tasks. So let's go and then make those changes. So I make the changes and then push them into the repository, click push. So that will kickstart the pipeline automatically. If I go into my Azure DevOps server, go to the builds, there's a build happening, change the message. That's why you get that blue sign. So it's running this build behind the scene. It's building the application. 
and now it's publishing those changes into the uh, building that docker image you can find that it's building uh, some layers so the build is almost done so you can find that it's not creating uh, layers that are existing it update the ecr repository and then i'm going to update the service so let's go to the service and then check what happened so back in ecs so if i refresh this on the service you can find that it deploy a new service called primary uh, there are going to be some pending count at some point in time so it's going to download the new images and then refresh that so if i go into my web application it's still working fine so you can find that the web application is working fine because the load balancer has still not passed the checks so behind the scene the deployment is working so you can find that now there's a one pending count so all the containers still in the pending state keep refreshing at some point in time uh, my new deployment will get will have two running containers or two running tasks So there's one running container. So here you can find in the load balancer, there's one initial state. The load balancer still haven't passed the health checks. So there are two containers in initial state. So these are the new containers that it started. So if I go into my uh, application, you can find that it's uh, now load balancing between the old version and the new version. So at some point in time, when all the new containers come alive, this message will change into uh, the final changes we made. So let's give it some time until uh, the old containers started draining. So you can find that still there's an old container running here. So that's why it's uh, still uh, directing the traffic into that. So you can set the timing into this, uh, how long it's going to keep these draining containers. So now you can find that all containers are all draining and I have these all new containers deployed and running. So let's refresh this again. So this is coming from the all container. So let's refresh this. And now you get it always the uh, latest message. So this is, uh, these are the IP addresses. So 10, 0, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3. So 10, 0, 1, 2, 2, 3. So that's healthy state. That's a new container that I publish. And the other one is, let's go to this page and come back again, is 10, 0, 2, 9. 10, 0, 2, 9, which is in the healthy state. So I finally got my application deployed into Fargate cluster through my Azure DevOps pipeline. Hope you enjoyed this session.